What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Bench Mob. Another week in recording. We're back at Bulldog Studios here. Uh, it's a great setup, as you can see. We've changed our setup a little bit. We've got um, the Jordan jersey, the above the rim jersey from the movie Drazen Petrovic. We got Kobe here. Shout out, Kobe. And we've got the oh, okay. NBA basketball there. So we've changed it up a little bit, but we thought we'd freshen it up, give it a new look. Give it a bit of a personality perspective. So, um, some big moves have been made, or Huge. have been have been talked about in the NBA circles regarding free agency, and a lot of it has been centered around James Harden and even Kyrie Irving. So, we'll start with James Harden's situation. Obviously, he's not going to take on his um, player option, or he's not going to uh, continue on with the 76ers. sixes. He's basically said that he's no longer going to be playing for them. And they're now looking at a trade suitor for him. And Adrian Wojnarowski reported that the Knicks and the Clippers would be pursuing him and his services. What do you make of that whole um, matchup in terms of, or match for James Harden in terms of the Knicks and the Clippers? Do you think they're the right suitors? Do you think another team should come to the to the um, equation? What do you think? What do you make of it? So for me, if there's the most realistic option, it's the New York Knicks. I mean, the amount of assets that they do have in Obi Toppin. RJ Barrett, Emmanuel Quickly. Um, there's just so many assets that they do have, even guys like Miles McBride. I think if they really want to make this trade work, yes, they easily can. They have a lot of first round picks as well for the future. But would I give up all that young talent to get a guy like James Harden to pair up with Julius Randle, um, as well as Jalen Brunson? Look, I think they it makes them a better team. But I don't know in the long-term future if that would be the best move for them. In terms of the Clippers, um, you would think that if there's a trade involved there, that it would be Paul George or it would be a Kawhi Leonard just to make the money match. And they don't really have any real assets outside of those two. So that would mean that they move on from either of those players, which to me, I think I think you do that move because they haven't been healthy. They haven't gone as far as people would have liked them to go in the playoffs. And if you, they're not healthy, they've had this long, this amount of time to kind of get to that championship point. They haven't done it. And many people thought that they would have had a couple rings already. They haven't. So I, I would move on from either Kawhi or Paul George if that's available. And I think that's a win for both parties. I mean, Philly would get PG next to Joel Embiid or they would get Kawhi Leonard, which, hey, that's even better if... He can manage to string even 60 games with Joel Embiid. I think they could have a run at a real, like a championship for sure. What did you make out of it? Um, yeah, well, I don't know. I think at this point in James Harden's career, yes, he still was very productive over the past year. You know, he he showed, I think there was a lot of people doubting that he would be able to come back and play at a, at a decent level. Again, we haven't seen the scoring James Harden that we we, we've come to know over the last few years when he was at the Rockets in his prime. But then again, you know, he's he was willing to take on that role specifically because he knew Joel Embiid was the number one option on that team. But we obviously saw that partnership didn't work out. Yeah. It's proven a lot of um, years um, in terms of his playoff production that he's maybe not suited to playoff basketball and he's not uh, the kind of player that can take you to a championship. But again... Um, there was obviously talks of re regarding his relationship with Doc Rivers and how that all fell apart. So, I mean, a fresh start for James Harden would be the right move here. I mean, would I give up, like you said, uh, a lot of assets to get him? Probably not yeah. because already you can see what kind of um, improvement was made from RJ Barrett's side of things. Emmanuel qu quickly started to come along. Jalen Brunson had an all-NBA kind of a season and – I feel like, again, you bring another guy with exactly the same play style as a Luka Doncic to the Knicks, then you kind of stagnate Jalen Brunson's development. He's still in his mid-20s. He's coming into his prime. Again, you could ask the question, like, is a guy like James Harden coming on the back end of his career still more productive than a Jalen Brunson? You could argue that case. But then again, seeing what he did in the playoffs, seeing that he helped them take that first round series win against the Cavs, I wouldn't do it personally for the Knicks. I can see it makes more sense for the Clippers to to do it, especially if they decide to sign um, Russell Westbrook back or re-sign him to a, a new deal. Um, I can see that partnership working, and you know, it like you mentioned, I think it's either going to be one of Paul George or Kawhi Leonard who decide who they decide to uh, include in that trade. It's 
It's going to be a big question mark. But again, it can now allow them to sign James Harden because they got rid of Eric Gordon's contract. Mm-hmm. Eric Gordon um, being waived by the team saves them having to go over $116 million into the luxury tax. So again, that's something that you know the Clippers have now used to their advantage. You can obviously go and lure a guy like James Harden. I think PG is probably the more likely target, someone that would be more attractive to Philly. Yeah, for sure. Um, especially because he's been the one that's been um, pushed in more of the trade talks as of recent times, especially with um, – there was news that came around at the draft where the, apparently that yeah, – New York Knicks. You know, no, the, the Blazers Paul. actually. Oh. Portland Trailblazers were feeling out whether Paul George would actually – or whether they would bite the bullet and, and you know trade Paul George to the Clippers to get – sorry, to the Blazers to get um, Scoot Henderson in the third pick. So, you know – in that saying that, I think Paul George is more the likely target or more of the likely trade partner in this particular instance. Yeah, it's more luring for sure. Yeah, and I think they they despite the fact that Kawhi Leonard's had this load management um, trouble in terms of not being on the court, he's had the injury issues over the last few years. I still think what he brings when he is fit and firing in terms of a two way being the, one of the premier two way players in this league. Not saying Paul George isn't. I just think. Um, it's, it's the right move, I think, to go to the Clippers as opposed to the Knicks in this situation. Yeah, for sure. I think either organisation, to me, they both make sense, but it's just when I look at the Clippers and I look at the Knicks, I look at the Knicks as and it's still an aspiring young squad who have plenty to build on, and I just don't... I know Harden was a superstar in this league, but I do think his values diminish, and it's nothing to do with his play on the court, but he's shown that come playoff time... He's not always healthy. Sometimes he's out and about doing the wrong thing. Obviously, he loves the nightlife, clubbing, you know, strip clubs. That's no secret. And, yeah, that's why I guess so many team people are saying, like, Miami are a real chance. Obviously, they were they, – they went to the finals and they missed out. But, look, it does make sense in terms of location for James Harden. But, yeah, if I'm the Knicks and I've been wanting a superstar for that long since Carmelo Anthony, I don't think James Harden – an aging James Harden is necessarily the guy. I think you got to look towards the route of a Zion Williamson or even a Damian Lillard, someone who is a real franchise changer. And at this point, I don't think, I mean, James Harden's gone from Houston to Brooklyn to Philly to now um, another team. So I wouldn't go all in for James Harden if I'm the New York Knicks. No way. Especially after they were, they were like a top four seed. Just the last point I want to add to this particular um, trade rumor is pretty much, in my opinion, um, the Knicks should look at more of like the mid to late 20s kind of player, maybe just the players that have just hit the 30-year-old mark. I know James Harden's 33. Donovan Mitchell. Yeah, I mean, that that whole thing with the Brian Windhorst situation saying something big is going to happen in Cleveland. I don't know. That got shut down pretty quickly. I don't know if it was yeah. because Windy gave away too much information, but... Pretty much him and Darius Garland were having a laugh on Twitter about it, saying, oh, this is the first I've heard of this, or this is, like, news to me. So, I mean, you know, that could still be a possibility because they were, you know how badly they wanted Donovan Mitchell and how badly they were pursuing him in that. Hometown hero. Yeah, exactly. And it's something that, you know, I think he he would really suit the bright lights of Madison Square Garden. But I think, yeah, you need to think about what your timeline is with your squad and you've got to think about where, you know, your superstars are currently aged at, you know, in terms of Jalen Brunson, I consider him almost a superstar the way he played this year. He's not a superstar yet, but in terms of his production, I think... Borderline all NBA. Yeah, correct. So I think that, along with a guy like Julius Randle, you have to consider what the future for Julius Randle is. Do they decide to keep him? Do they include him as part of a deal to obviously then lure another superstar in? Because again, even him in the playoffs has been a little bit of a disappointment at times. Um, we don't see the normal Julius Randle that we see during the regular season. So again, it's a lot of questions to be answered from all teams involved in this situation, the Clippers, the Knicks, and the Sixers, and James Harden. So we'll just have to wait and see and find out, you know, where this whole um, tale of events eventuates to. But um, all in all, it's interesting, and it always makes for uh, good viewing from an NBA fan's perspective. Yeah, 100%. But, yeah, Harden, I don't know if he's a franchise changer. You know, he's got a even compete for another championship in his career. But, yeah, that's all that really needs to be said, I think, about these two organisations. Will he influence them? Yes. But will he be the guy that pushes you over the edge to win a championship? Personally, I don't think so. 
I might get hate in the comment sections, but hey, after that piss and Zazar Thompson video, we're kind of used to it. So <laughs> I guess we'll come and see. But yeah, we appreciate you guys um, coming on our channel again. Make sure you guys do subscribe if you do enjoy this type of content. We really try to, you know, level our game. I mean, you can just see it with the set. Um, but yeah, plenty of more videos to come similar to this. Bolt content. If you love these types of discussions, make sure you sub. But we also got plenty more videos and, yeah, give away a 1,000 subs. So we're giving away one of these, a free NBA jersey, valued up to $150. So if you are interested, all you have to do is subscribe and we'll give you the details on the screen right now. Hello, yes, you at home. This is Commissioner of the NBA speaking to you, Adam Silver. Here's a message in courtesy of Benchmob in collaboration with the NBA store. When Benchmob hits 1,000 subscribers, they'll be giving away a free NBA jersey to a lucky subscriber. So just do all the things listed on the screen. But for now, it's been Marks from the Benchmob. It's been Danko from the Benchmob. We out, baby. It's been an absolute pleasure, guys. See you later.